Welcome to the Absolutely Unnecessary Podcast. Seems like everybody's got a podcast this day, so old Simon and myself decided, hey, why the hell not? Let's get after it. I'm Jay Kuhn. This is Simon Carson. We're about to take you through all the uh, MMA shit that you need to know. This weekend, Bellator 231 and 232. On Bellator 231, old man Frank Mir came out and beat the brakes off of a very fat and old Roy Nelson. I don't know. I, I, I want to get your take on this. How long do you think they're going to let dudes like this keep fighting in Bellator? Oh, I, I, why people still want to watch it is probably the answer. And people are always curious. Like, I mean, yeah. The name, people's name stays and there'll never be a shortage of people willing to fight those guys. Yeah, I think, I think yeah, that, that's it at the end of the day. You're never going to have a shortage of dudes, like, say, that are in my position who are like, well, you, could, you can go fight Roy Nelson. Nobody's going to say hell no to that. Yeah. But at the same time, like, how long do, like, do you let these guys just sauce up on TRT and old, old booze to try to keep them in the cage? I don't know how long these dudes are going to last. <laughs> But I guess it's, yeah. it's not our deal. No, it's not, that's, uh, <laughs> not our call, really. Yeah, so. really. But fucking, uh, they, uh, they got some good fights, though, still with those guys left in them. I think um, with Mir winning and with Bellator doing the co-promotion now with Ryzen, there's actually some interesting fights for him over in that Japanese sector. Yeah. You get, you know, Mir fighting a guy like a uh, Roki Martinez or anybody like that in Japan. Something like that would actually be pretty interesting to see. Yeah, definitely contrast the styles with that. Yeah, 100%. So. And then um, on to the Bellator 232, just a little recap. Douglas Lima is an absolute killer. Came through that tournament after losing his belt and won the million dollars and got his belt back from Roy McDonald, the weirdest dude in mixed martial arts. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that dude has bodies in his basement somewhere. Not proven. <laughs> He's absolutely got them in. But yeah, he came out and won a uh, pretty hard fought but one-sided uh, decision. I think two judges had it at 50-45. So yeah. came out and a little bit of insight on that. Dougie had a small touch of the dengue in Thailand. Oh, Jesus. So he came out after going to Thailand and <laughs> managed Jesus. to put on a fight like that against a really, really tough Huff, Roy Marquardt. I mean, if you look at a guy like Marquardt, he's fucking, he's been in the game as a straight mixed martial artist since he came out. Didn't, yeah. didn't get into it as like a wrestler or as a grappler or as a kickboxer. Started from like 14, I think, at TriStar with yeah. guys. And just like, I'm going to train martial arts and put all of his little autistic sights on just yeah. being the best mixed martial artist you can. I mean, the guy's done great. If you really look at yeah, well, it. When he was in the UFC, everyone was talking about he was going to take over from GSP. Oh, 100%. Because you know, yeah. I was the same team at the time. But yeah, he had massive reps on him. So Yeah. Um, but for, for, for Douglas to come out and be able to get done, he, uh, he did it. And you know what? To win that million dollars, man, I think people really like, they don't, they don't understand like what that means to a fighter. Like um, I had uh, the opportunity at one point when I was with PFL to be in a tournament for a million dollars. Yeah. And like, just the added pressure that that shit adds in the back oh. of your brain of like million dollars, million dollars. This is life changing type money. It's life changing. What am I going to do with a million dollars? Yeah. And of course, you know, it gets going through your head. You start, you know, you start writing checks in your brain before you get yeah. out there or anything. But I mean, honestly, it couldn't happen to a better guy than Douglas. I mean, that dude is so nice. His whole team out there with Jukau and his brother and those cats. I think that that's going to be a good thing. They'll do a lot better things with a million dollars than I would. I'm curious. What would you do <laughs> if you won a million dollars in one night? I'm actually more curious what you do with a million dollars because I have some ideas. And she should be gone in about three weeks. Yeah, um, I, I reckon I'd be on a, I'd be on a boat somewhere in South America. And nobody'd see me for a while. <laughs> I actually go for longer in South America. I reckon for you, but yeah. Oh man! So that's uh, that's the kind of the wrap up of the international scene this weekend. Obviously, we had the uh, Damien my uh, oh, uh, fight, but. We'll, we'll we'll got Craig, oh, we got Craig coming in later. Craig Jones coming in later. Probably um, should have told you guys that. Guest yeah. of the day. Craig, Craig Jones. Craig Jones. Because so, there was sort of some <laughs> grapply kind of stuff in that fight, apparently. Right, uh, I guess they grappled Then a bit. We'll, we'll let uh, Craig, we'll discuss that with Craig and yeah. what he thought of it. But before we get to bringing Craig on and everything, we want to wrap up. Um, coming up for Eternal, I believe it is this weekend, Eternal 49 out here in Australia. It's available on UFC Fight Pass, so if you're listening to this shit internationally, don't feel like it's only Aussies that can see this. We've got, what do we have, four guys from the gym Yeah, fighting? so we've got four guys. I think three of the four, it's their debut fight. So um, uh, actually, yeah, three of the four and one guy's second fight. So it's definitely sort of some of our junior uh, members from the team. Uh, they're sort of all on the undercard. So we've got uh, John Benson, Corey Sutcliffe, Rion, and uh, Nick all fighting this weekend. So... Good luck to those guys. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, so it's good. it's good. It's, I really feel like the 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 lower level pro you can count lower level pro, but like the regional scene in Australia is really growing with shows like Eternal and Hex. 
giving guys a bit of like an, an ability to kind of get seen with they're having their shows on fight pass and things like that. So where you're not having to, not having to only fight in bar shows and then yeah. hope that you get a call up having shows like this is really good for these guys. So yeah, the Eternal's doing a lot of shows at the moment. So we got, I think we got four on this weekend. Then first weekend of December, Eternal goes again in Perth. I think we got six on there. Um, then we got uh, actually in Melbourne because Melbourne's been very quiet with Hex pretty much been the only show run for the last two or three years. So Eternal just came to town. Yeah. Uh, actually in terms of results, XFC, we had two weeks ago, we had three guys fight on that. Uh, Jasper, Jasper Dunford did really well, won his pro fight. And then we had um, Louis Tran make his debut and win. And Rids fought for the uh, amateur flyweight title. And uh, yeah, he lost in the third round. But uh, yes, we had a lot of guys uh, fight on that as well. But yeah, the local scene's really starting to kick what, off. What now. all is there right now out here in Australia? There's, there's Eternal. There's Eternal, which runs pretty much in now all states. So they've done shows in like uh, Queensland. I don't think they've done in Sydney, but all the other states. So they've sort of run all around the place. Is you it got legal Hex everywhere in Oz now? This is, my, this is my stupid American not understanding what happens in it's, Australia. <laughs> it is legal everywhere, but unfortunately the rules are still not consistent uh, from state to state, which is... The rules being like the like just the, the, the sanctioning bodies or is it separate well, actual yeah, so rule there's, sets? Yeah, so there's actual separate rule sets. That's so fucking ridiculous. So one week, <laughs> one week the amateurs will be out of need of the head, the next week they won't. The next week... And, I don't want to shit on Western Australia, but they've got the weirdest. I will shit on Western Australia. <laughs> they've got some of the weirdest <laughs> rules ever. Like they had pros they wanted to put in eight ounce gloves and shin gloves because they hadn't met the minimum fight requirements, even though these guys had fought before. But they're pros. Pro before. It's a professional fight. Yeah, so they That's just have outlandish. To, and so you had multiple rule sets on the one card: big gloves, small gloves, shin guards, no shin guards. And it was goes on the number of fights you've had, not whether it's pro or amateur over there. So I think they're working do you, through. Do you, as um, the head coach here, do you do you have a preference for like? Which which state or which show you put your guys on? Because I mean, you I would think me as as a professional, I wouldn't want at some point in my career to all of a sudden have to be where I fought full pro rules with elbows and everything, and then all of a sudden I'm having to wear shin guards and puffy gloves. That's not something I want because your share dog and your tapologies and said they're not going to recognize it. No, guys, so I, it, the, to be fair, it's only I think if you've had three or f- less than three or four fights in WA, so it could be a beginner pro, but you might have gone pro right. and now it's your second fight, and then you go over there because I think you've. I don't remember the number, but it's like six or eight fights you've got. Six had. or eight professional fights. Yeah, but they okay. count boxing, tie boxing, and whatever. But they won't count like your wrestling. So you could be a gold medal Olympic wrestler or something like so that. And Yoel, that doesn't. You could count. be Yoel Romero coming out after he fucking did all the one yeah. of the silvers and everything. And he comes before out, he fought. But oh, before man. he fought, yeah, well, yeah. you know, we don't yeah, say. Yeah. And, and he comes out and he's got to wear shin guards and yeah. The, wow. Yeah, so look, there's some different things there. That, that look, that would be great in the future if we got like yeah. a unified rule set across the country. So there's the there's no unified like commission in Australia. There's not like the ABC. No, nah, so you got like it's a, all state governing bodies. Okay. And then in Queensland, Queensland doesn't have one. They've got I think it's called the Mixed Martial Arts Association of Australia or something, which is basically like a just a it's a bureaucratic like, group of dickheads. I'd, <laughs> Shout out to Peter Higmore. Yes. Yes. No, it's not. It's, it's not. They do a good job in where there's no, there's no, uh, there's no state sanctioning. So they basically try and sort of fill that role. So there is some, uh, you know, process to you know getting your bloods checked right. and registration and all those sorts of things. But I'd actually like the Queensland rules. So they pretty pretty simple in terms. A class pros like you know okay. normal unified MMA rules. B class is basically just no rotational leg locks, no elbows, but yeah. still knees to the head, little gloves, no shin guards. So it kind of looks similar to a pro fight. Right. Um, and then C class. C class is for your real entry level, no punching to the head on the ground and stuff like that. Okay. So, that, still- so there's, there's, a, there's a graduated system though. So these guys can kind of be brought into it slowly as opposed to getting thrown into the fire right away. Yeah, look, 100%. Which um, is... And then there's also IMF for the sort of amateur association sort of here that, uh, or the international one, which links up to like, they're sort of, basically they've got a different, there seems to be two ways the amateurs are going. One is, you know, the IMF, which is, you know, we want to get mixed martial arts as an amateur sport to get to the Olympics and so right. forth. And then there's one that is, you know, like an amateur to pro it's, pathway. There's, a, there's like the, the, it's the IMAFF and then WAMA or one of those. Yeah, there's like a, look, I don't know. There's quite a few. IMF is the one that I've had. A whole them. lot of letters. Yeah, <laughs> lots of letters. And uh, But yeah, IMF obviously used to be the sanctioning body for Path to Hex, okay. which it had a lot to fight light on here. So that was always shin guards and puffier gloves. And well, that, I think that's pretty common. Like you go back stateside and things like that for amateurs. It's they're generally wearing shins. And puffies. When I was coming up, it was usually just no elbows were allowed in amateurs. Yeah. But it's like it's like you said, that's state by state. It's so different. Like when I had my first amateur fight in Hawaii, my my only amateur fight, it was it was full pro rules yeah. minus the time. So it was a three minute round as yeah. opposed to a five. Yeah. But other than that, I mean, we were in four ounce gloves and 
going to work. Yeah. And it's, it's all, it's crazy though. If you think yeah. about it, these guys that like, you're going out there with no fights and you can get needed and that, yeah, you know, you're not, you don't, you don't expect what an elbow can do to you. If you haven't been training for it for yeah, years yeah. and years and it's shit scary. I, I think it's smart. Like, I mean, bless Australia being such a nanny state that they do hold these guys hands yeah. all the way up through, you know, but it, it gets them on a slow burn instead of just throwing them right in the fire right away. I mean, it's, People still do get thrown into the fight. <laughs> yeah. so it's just because you can go through the amateur ranks doesn't mean people so always can, do. So can you go straight pro in Australia? Is that an option? You can, but not in, double, not in Western Australia. So I understand what WA is trying to do there in terms of protecting people just to make sure that there is some sort of uh, you know, progression and gateway. But no, you can go straight. As long as the commission it clears you, it clears it. And if you're medically fit, they're going to clear yeah, it. They're pretty good. Like, yeah. going to clear it. There's been a few fights where I'm like, that guy's zero five. This guy's twenty two and two. Surely they're not going to clear that. Oh no, oh, that's right. That's true. I will it's never good. understand what goes through and see some of these commissions' minds when you see like the records of the other person. You have a guy with thirty six fights fighting a dude with three fights who's lost two of those three fights. It's like, no, yeah. this is, they are evenly matched. No, yeah. they're not. There's something to be said for experience, man. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I suppose it's also it is a uh, it's easy to sit on the sidelines and I suppose judge that but there are some on Sunday paper morning quarterback baby yeah. <laughs> and also when, you, when when someone's gonna fight they're ready to go and someone pulls out and the late replacement yeah and all that and how sort many of guys stuff. are gonna step up the, yeah. the thing is and like that brings us into something else and I'm, I'm going totally off of our topics you're meant to yes. today. but you know I see it so much just around this gym and around everywhere in the in the world is these guys, these young cats, they're so concerned with protecting their records uh. that they refuse to do what you just said where a guy somebody had a fight fall out yeah. And this guy's like, no, I'm, I'm not going to jump in and take this fight. You know, I need to protect my brand, protect my record. Like, dude, you're a fucking amateur. You yeah. don't have a brand or a record. Just yeah. go get the experience, bro. At amateurs, look, uh, it, that you're just trying to build experience. Yeah. Together. Like, go, I don't, amateur records speed. don't, don't matter. As long as I don't get like, I don't want to put my guys in to get murdered. Yeah, but, but I uh, feel like it's important for you to fucking to go through it. I mean, I wouldn't say to get your ass beat, but you need you need to know what it feels like to be the nail a little bit. Oh, hundred percent, and especially against like going and getting like totally out grappled or submitted. Yeah, and all that. it's nothing wrong. Just with that. feeling that pressure yeah. of a guy on top of you, like getting getting underneath a, like a real high level grappler and just getting your shit mushed. I think everybody <laughs> everybody needs to feel that though. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Because you see it so often where you'll see these guys that they've been kind of kind of brought along and, and, uh, and, yeah. and groomed and then they get into a fight where all of a sudden, oh, this dude ain't going to fall down after three punches yeah. and they don't know what to do. Yeah, you want those challenges in an amateur, not as yeah. a pro. So yeah, you want the guys to you want the guys to get in a fight before they go. But those guys that you know go five zero and I fought guys that haven't won a fight. You know, and, um, and, and sorry, haven't haven't had a real fight as an amateur. Right. And you, then yeah, there's been a couple of guys like our, some of our better amateurs where I've wanted to get them tougher yeah. fights. It's just been it's just hard to get hard a fight. To get. Like Kevin just said, he wanted the toughest fights we could right. get as an amateur. When you, and but you, his first real challenge ended up coming like. Yeah. You know, like as these third or fourth pro and, and Kevin, that guy, and that's the whole thing. Like, and you as a head coach, you you would recognize. But I mean, guys like Kevin, you got to pull the reins on. They're yeah. not the guys you got to light the fire under the ass. No, you no. got to pull the reins on them. Yeah, you know, and it's it it's good to have. It's, it's I guess it's kind of just a toss up in the air of how to deal with all that shit. Yeah, but it's not just at the amateur level. You know, even at the pro level, you'll get guys picking up fights against. You know, you could you could be a one and zero pro, also being known as the best um, Australian heavyweight, and get called in <laughs> yeah. to have a fight against a guy with eighty seven pro fights up in. Uh, up in uh, yeah. Korea, yeah, what was yeah. It? Oh, Macau, or whatever. Mac yeah, it Marie, but it's yeah, Korean yeah, promotion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, I, I, so side, side, side bet on that one. How how did that feel jumping into a fight like that? I mean, like the guys had 87, 87, no, 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 eighty seven wins. I think eighty seven wins. Oh, no, something like that. I don't know. Eight two hundred plus fights. Outlandish, but so like yeah. I mean, you would know what it's like for some of these these amateur guys to kind of go. Not not that not your amateurs, but yeah. you had one pro fight. This dude had. Hundreds Dude. of fights. Yeah, yeah. I, I look, uh, obviously, that's we're talking for about me, Simon and Shannon, Shannon Rich in Battlefield uh, FC. But yeah, look, that was just uh, I had nothing to lose. I didn't have a man. I've got. I don't have. I don't have a career. I don't. I, <laughs> I don't have, have a brand to protect. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I don't. I, I didn't have anything to sort of lose on that. So that's a little. I understand the difference between. There's probably if it was a guy that was one and one, right. trying to get it, like Try, trying to build to a career, wins. then I'd say, hey, don't take don't that. Don't take that fight. Yeah, that but, makes sense. And that's that's where it's good. These guys have somebody yeah. that. Because I think the worst thing, and it, the worst thing a fighter can do is manage their own career early on. Well, fighters just, won't. Fighters, if they're a real fighter, won't say no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they won't. They, they won't. Because for them, it's almost like a stigma of yeah. taking the right fights. You know? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. 
But, uh, you know, and eventually everyone's got to step up eventually if you want to get somewhere. There's no, no. Yeah, there's no easy, there's no easy path to get into what you want to do in this game. If you want to, if you want to be fucking Anderson up there with your hands up in the ring, yeah. you're going to have to fight tough guys. Yeah. And I mean, you can be the, you can be the tough guy in a small pond, you know, beating dudes up in a bar show, but yeah. nobody, nobody that really is truly a fighter wants to do that. No. I don't think. You want to get that challenge. Um, uh, so, Simon. Ah, so your, so now. We've been to what's up? Fix your mic, bro. Oh, ah, sorry. You, you just tell the song, bitch. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> sorry. I hope you just didn't miss any of the gold I was pouring out. But yeah, anyway. just pouring uh, out. So, uh, um, so now you, for you, your uh, rise in December. Though. Looking, looking like we're going to be back in Saitama for uh, the Rise of New Year's Eve card. Um, Nothing is as yet been confirmed, as I have learned when dealing with the Japanese. I say nothing until they say things. Yeah. But it's looking really good. Um, camp is going well. You know, I made a great move of coming down here to Absolute. <laughs> and, I mean, I thought when I moved to Australia that my fight career was kind of going to take its uh, its waning moments and kind of yeah. be done. But I'll tell you what, this is not a this is not a plug. This is not a plug for Absolute <laughs> MMA. <laughs> But um, I've been on a tear since I've been training here, and um, I uh, I've been I've, I've gone what's gone been three in Ryzen or two in Ryzen two uh, two and two wins in yeah. Ryzen back to back real close, yeah. and uh, now we got another one coming up. Um, and you know, I mean, Ryzen is putting together some beautiful things for me up there. I really want to fight Vanderlei Silva up there. Oh, I be... don't know if it's gonna happen, yeah. <laughs> but I don't know if he's even there or available. But yeah. I feel, how fun would that fight be? That would be. For New Year's. No takedowns, just me and Vandalay toe to toe in the middle of the cage, beating the shit out of each other. That'd be uh, good to watch, actually. So. It, it just TBIs for everybody. Yeah. TBIs yeah. all yeah. around. Yeah. All around. <laughs> oh, man. And then, so the last thing I really want to get on, just kind of chopping shit up before Craig gets in here. Um, have you paid attention to any of this BKB? Yeah. This shit but, that's so, going on. Because you see a lot on, I don't know how bro broad. The reach is like for the general population, yeah. but I see a lot of it on social so media for those, and Facebook. For, for, and for people who don't know, BKB is bare knuckle boxing. So recently, I'd say it's probably been what the last two years, three years. Yeah, well, because all of a sudden, some of the big, um, obviously, the goat broke away to yeah. do some <laughs> BKB, and uh, since he uh, he did that, and then obviously that been signed. Uh, Artem Chris, Lobov, yeah, you know, so the much. greatest of all time, uh, but, and like Chris Lee, and they yeah. were signing a lot of like. Sort and, uh, they of had extras. that whole show that fell and through. And Aussie's like Beck Rawling, she, yeah, she yeah, went across yeah. as well. Yeah. But I mean, this 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 stuff is absolutely wild. So boxing originally, a lot of people don't know, boxing originally wasn't a glove sport. It was it was bare knuckle, and the gloves were introduced later on. I believe it was in the early early 1900s they started gloving up. And, you know, everybody's ever, there's always been this kind of this debate of like, oh, do the gloves actually cause more damage because you can hit harder yeah. and people can withstand. Then protect your hands. Yeah, so, you can, so you, can, you can really turn a punch over and crank where with a, with a bare knuckle, you can't do it. Yeah. But I will fucking say this. These dudes' faces are fucked yeah, after yeah. these bare knuckle fights. I mean, you can look at this. Like, look. So this week, this last big fight they had, they had Bigfoot Silva versus Gabriel Napal Gonzaga, two high-level UFC guys at one time. These are large, large men beating the brakes off of each other with no gloves on. Look at this. Yeah, this look crazy. at this uppercut he hits him with. Bop, bop, bang. Yeah. Uppercut hook, and Bigfoot's out. Yeah. Now, here's a, here's a question. He's he, he's not an easy guy. To, he's not an easy guy to knock out. No, he's got no. a massive head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the man is a legitimate giant. Yeah. And he's over here getting knocked out. What would it take to get you into a bare knuckle fight? <laughs> this is just... You know, <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm... Uh, no? Oh, I'm out uh, money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Money uh, and someone that will fall out. Someone that'll yeah, yeah, no. fall down in <laughs> the three strike. No. If Okay, if you could... How about have, you? Because this would suit your stuff. Like, you know... you. Man, you know what? I'm gonna stick with my original call out. If I could fight anybody bare knuckles, the same guy I want to fight in in Ryzen. Uh, Give me Vanderlei. Stand yeah, in front of me and let's throw. It wouldn't be a long fight, at least. I don't <laughs> no, know. it wouldn't be a long. One of us to go to sleep get, real yeah. quick. And now, um, on the state, the other thing with uh, the bare knuckle is living in Thailand. Everybody, there's this whole thing of this lithway, this lithway, yeah. this bare knuckle or karchuk. Everybody kind of gets it confused. Karchuk is the Thai the version. Rope, the That's ropes. where they wear the ropes. But no headbutts. But then you go across the border to, no headbutts. You go yeah. across the border to Burma, a.k.a. Myanmar, and there is a sport going on up there that yeah. is absolutely batshit crazy. I went up there to corner a couple guys. I went up and cornered Dave LaDuke, who is the undisputed king of lithway. Shout yeah. out, Dave. You're a bad motherfucker. I'll give it to you. But he, yeah. um, so you go up there and there is, it's three three-minute rounds, just like, or five threes if it's a championship, just like uh, Muay Thai. But headbutts are legal. Throws yeah. are legal. 
There is no knocking. There is no winning on points. No, nah, it's just so, it, 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 if you finish, it's, yep, if, it's a draw. And, and, and I can, as you say, I'm cornering you in a fight and you get knocked out cold. I can call timeout and have five minutes to bring you back to life and send you back out there again. Yeah. And if you continue to fight through that fight, you don't lose. It's a draw. This sport so, is insane. Yeah. And they, they use some interesting tactics to keep them awake, I believe, too. Uh, yeah. I'm, I saw some interesting things in Burma that I don't want the Burmese government to know that I saw. Uh, yeah, so they seem very energized when They're they go. They're real out. energized in the corner. So, and so that makes them a lot harder to sleep. Too. Well, that's so the whole thing. There's, they tend to be able to go. There were guys up there that I saw on that Lithway show in Rangoon that wore full shin on the face. I'm talking yeah. clean shin across jaw would have slept anybody. And these dudes are awake. Yeah. Something squarely was going on yeah. up there for sure. They, uh, but that being said, that that sport and the night that I cornered up there was one of the most intense and like mentally draining things yeah. I've ever done in my life. These dudes are beating the living hell out of each other. Like you think, because yeah. you know when you, when you corner a guy in a fight, like you corner tons of guys all over yeah. the world and shit. Corner me in Japan, corner guys out here, corner everywhere. Yeah. But like, it's still, it's still, it's still a sport. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, at the end of the day, like nobody's going to fucking die. Yeah. You know, well, generally speaking, yeah. RIP to the boxers recently, yeah. but this Lithway shit, it, 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 it's like these guys are, it's, well, it's, like, guy, it's almost like a fight. This, the, it yeah. is a fight. Yeah. yeah. Like, these dudes are headbutting each other and carving each other's face up and you're yeah. waking them up off the ground. It's like your buddy, you're walking down the street to the bar and some dickhead comes out of nowhere and cleans him out yeah. and you got to wake your friend up and get ready to keep fighting again. It's yeah. insane. Yeah. Absolute madness. <sighs> it's insane. I would say like, honestly, and yeah, also, they're not doing it for the biggest paycheck. No, like, that's, like, that, that, it, that's the part that I get that, is crazy. But th th to me, that's not even that it's crazy. It's pure. These guys are doing it because they fucking want to fight. Yeah. These dudes want to fight. They're there to fucking throw down. Now, granted, the Burmese probably don't necessarily, like, that's not their ideal pathway. Yeah. They probably like to do other things, but that's what they got. But like, you look at the Falong or the white people that go up in there and do it, or the black, they, you know, the people that the foreigners, I should say. Yeah. Let's not get so racially specific, Jake. They, um, <laughs> they go up there and like, these dudes are going up there because they want to fight. These guys yeah. aren't going to, like you said, these dudes, I went up to the people I went up there, they made 600 bucks for TBIs. Yeah. $600. And, the, and one of the, one of the, the girl I cornered, uh, Monica Brainis, she's a great, she's a great fighter in, at uh, Tiger Muay Thai, you know, yeah. mid-level Muay Thai fighter. Decided she wanted to go do it because they put a world title on the line for her. Yeah. Monica hasn't fought ever since. Yeah. Because that girl, uh, she fighted up, you know, the shit's crazy up there. Yeah. But you know what? Well, something that can never be taken away from people who go up there and fight like that is those, those folks are, they're fighters. Yeah. They're there to fucking fight. And speaking of madness in Lithway, I digress. Guys, we got Craig Jones coming in. Stay tuned. We're going to break down the Askren loss, ADCC, a possible Luke Rockhold versus Craig Jones fight. Yeah. That is two pretty men about to get butt naked and grapple. Thanks for that. Pretty we're, yeah, you're right. He's kind of an ugly kind of yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, uh, We're going to break down the pan packs, and we're going to have Craig take us through some of the grappling progressions that happened in MMA this week. Chat shit about uh, what's going on in Craig's world. Stay tuned. Back after this. The Absolute Happenings, coming to you live from the Absolutely Unnecessary Podcast Studio, a.k.a. Simon's Dirty Ass Office. <laughs> okay, so first we're going to come over. What's happened in the last month? Uh, so in terms of MMA news, we had uh, three guys fight on the new XFC demolition promotion here in Melbourne. Uh, one pro fight being Jasper Dunphy, who did really well to grind out a decision win. And Shout out to Jasper in that head kick. Yeah, very nice setup. And uh, we had uh, Louis Tran make his debut and got a nice win, so he did pretty well. And Ridzwan fought for the title, but unfortunately, uh, too much bench press, not enough running, mm. and uh, gassed a little bit in that fight. But uh, still did very well. He was caught in a nasty armbar for a long time, got his arm bent a long way, and the tight as hell and stood and tapped, so a lot of heart there. Um, we had Kate uh, get a win out on Warriors Way. We had Kevin... Kevin Jusset. Uh, Kevin Jusset uh, stepped up on, I think, about a week's notice to fight for the Eternal Strap against a very good opponent. Uh, he put up a really good fight and just got stopped on a cut between the second and third round. Uh, Panpax, I think, became third in the No Gi Teams event and had a lot of people win medals and all those sorts of things. Absolute showed up real well at Panpax. Yeah, so they did a good job there for the number of competitors that we had. Uh, we had uh, Craig Jones ran a camp over in Thailand, had 50 people there for uh, all learning his leg lock tricks, so that was pretty cool. And then that was backed up by a women's only camp with Liv, uh, and Liv and Louisa ran a camp over there, and that, that got some good numbers too. Uh, we're lucky enough to have a lot of the city kickboxing crew training here, including Israel and 
uh, Dan Hooker. Dan Hooker had and, the, uh, Brad. Brad uh, Riddell came through down yeah. the city gym. They all got their working down there. Chael Sonnen stopped in. The real people's champ came through. Unfortunately, he spoke to Liam McNeil. They didn't represent <laughs> us that well on Chael's show, but it's uh, got that. Uh, Joe, uh, Jake, he's gonna, <laughs> that, that guy, that, that guy, that just going to cover what's coming up. Upcoming, we have on Eternal, we've got three guys making their debuts, one guy not. we got John, Corey, Rion, and Nick, all are going to be fighting for Eternal in the MMA world and in the world of Muay Thai. We've got Big Joe Bubia, the head Muay Thai coach here at Absolute MMA Collingwood. We'll be fighting for the WBC International title at some weight that's probably his actual weight as opposed to fighting heavyweights in Australia. I think he's so. still about five or six kilos heavier than he should be. <laughs> so big fight coming up there, guys. Pay attention to that. Pay attention to Eternal. We got four guys fighting from here. That's all that's going on in the world of Absolute. And now, Craig Jones. Grappling, phenom, superstar, Australian lady killer. I'm going to let Simon bring in because I don't know shit about jiu-jitsu because there's no punches involved. Well, I thought he just did bring him in, but we got Craig here fresh yeah, off his I'm ready uh, for more. I, <laughs> he always likes people blowing smoke up his ass. Um, and other things. So uh, we got Craig fresh off his ADCC uh, silver medal. Congrats and, on that, uh, So well done on that, Craig. Uh, so we like to have a few guys from Absolute over there. So tell us about uh, ADCC, your prep, and how that went. We'll start with that. ADCC, uh, what? Uh, so I had three... Three wins leading to the final, and then uh, obviously lost to Mateus Denise. But I guess you guys want to know about the the eye infections going around. <laughs> yeah. right? What sort of eye did you have? I want to know shit on your pillow. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. It was maybe a month out, three weeks out. Guys, the Henzos just started dropping with this EKC, epidemic carado conjunctivitis, <laughs> which at the time we thought it was a regular pink eye. But uh, obviously, after the fact, it's not, right? It's, uh, it's a virus, so you can't treat it with antibiotics. It takes about two to three weeks uh, to clear out your system. Some guys can have it for much, much longer as well. But uh, I thought I dodged it. So I stopped training the Friday before ADCC, so like eight, nine days before. I stopped training. I was like, I'm going to dodge this shit. But <clears throat> Tuesday, the following week, Tuesday night, I started coming down with it. So I had it full-fledged for ADCC. Obviously, it was uh, very obvious. Keenan pulled out ADCC, right. made a big deal about the eye infection. Yep. And because he made such a big deal and because his eye was so bad, he got it way worse than anyone else. So he put the fear of God into all the other competitors about it. Right. right? It's bad, but it's not terrible, right? Keenan had it terrible. So then they were so worried about catching it. And I did give it to a few guys, but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, they were, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, they were thinking it was going to be uh, way worse than it was, right? So they tried to get me kicked out of the tournament and stuff. But uh, the who, funny, who in particular tried to get you kicked out? Uh, as far as I know, Cyborg was trying to get us kicked out. Okay. Um, you think? Do you think he was legitimately concerned about the infection, or did he just not want a piece of that Craig action out there? Well, we weren't even the same to a weight division. Okay. I think he had one student in my division, but we're okay. on the other sides of the bracket. Yeah. I mean, if it was like if it was a super fight or an IBJJF or something, I probably would have pulled out. Right. ADCC been every two years. Like, yeah. I know the best, one of my opponents, I gave it to Mason Fowler, and I obviously apologized to him when I realized he had it, because it takes about a week for you to get it. But he was like, I didn't give a fuck. I would have competed with it. It's, it's, it's like ADCC. It's one of those things, like, it's like playing in the Super Bowl with a grand final or anything for regular sports, yeah? I mean, it's yeah. it's massive. Dudes aren't going to pull out just because somebody's got an infection, yeah. unless it's you're going to lose your eye over it or something. Or I, don't, I don't know how serious this shit might have been. Maybe it's, HIV or maybe something a, they might pull yeah, out. You know, <laughs> can't get it twice, Craig. With HIV. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, the funny thing is, is I had no symptoms of having EKC and I was looking for someone that definitely didn't have it. So Ben Hodgkinson had just flown to um, America. So I messaged him to train on the Saturday, get a sweat on, because obviously it's a week before I hadn't trained since the Friday. We rolled for 20 minutes and then he came down with it after 86. <laughs> does it, does it Why do you laugh? Are you so it's just what, a, tell um, me about the history between you and Ben, because I think that's actually an It's just an unfortunate story. event. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. I was, why are you smiling so much when you say it was an unfortunate <laughs> event then? Well, it's funny, right? <laughs> yeah. does, does anybody know who the patient zero was at Henzo's that I had, started spreading out? I'd never heard of EKC until Josh Hinger got it uh, earlier in the year. Yeah. And Josh had told me that Jonatas Gracie had been to Manaus in Brazil, and he came back with some wild eye infection. Crazy and jungle that, funk out Brazil. Sorry, Jonatas Gracie, that's not <laughs> true. But then apparently that's how it spread at Atos, <clears throat> and then it disappeared. I saw Josh Hinger on the tail end of it, so I saw his eye still messed up when I did his podcast. And then the next I heard of it was at TriStar, mm. and then it made its way from TriStar to uh, 
Henzo. So a lot of people were blaming Oliver Taza. They were saying Oliver Taza brought it down, but he definitely was not the first one to have it. Man, it's, it, it is crazy when you stop and think <clears> like <throat> about the amount of funk and gunk that goes Bro. in between dudes when you're grappling, especially when you're grappling at a high level like that and you guys are bouncing in between gyms and seeing different dudes that are coming out of, like you said, coming out the jungle down in Brazil and shit. Who <laughs> knows what those son of bitches got down there? Well, they closed the doors. Uh, the Henzo's guys were so pissed about EKC hitting the gym that they don't allow visitors anymore. No shit. So it's, it's closed Henzo, Henzo team only now. Yeah. Damn. Because, I mean, I mean, so here's the problem is like if – you're a regular guy, you're a hobbyist or whatever, you travel to New York, it's your one holiday a year, maybe, Yeah. you want to train, and you got staff. You're not going to not fucking go. Exactly. So it's they, like cats that go to Thailand, and they don't. They want to jump in the wall. Yeah. I've, I've gone, like, you know, with the absolute Thailand out there, if cats yeah. are out there on their trip, or they're going out for Craig Jones's camp out there yeah. in Phuket, they're, they're, not gonna, they're not going to get there and realize, oh, I got staff, I'm not, I'm not going to not get on the mat. I paid for this shit. Exactly, yeah, it's, that's the problem. You can't we've had, we've had uh, worse outbreaks in the camps and anything else i mean your last camp was really good that we only got we only got one guy who got it after camp quite badly i think but um oh marcus yeah yeah um, oh marcus what, who was the kid remember the kid that came and turned up with staff really badly ringworm ringworm right? oh was it ringworm yeah and then like he he was like an 18 year old white belt and then he had the whole week off and then, and then the first his... <laughs> then, the, then you broke his leg on the oh, first yeah. day rolling I should clarify was about, this, this, is, this kid's about a 58 kilo white belt that didn't know and he's like he should have tapped I had his leg he should have tapped so he was, broke the kid's leg and then sure. later that night got him drunk and I believe he's got your name tattooed across his ass is wait, that wait. correct yes, you're uh, mixing <laughs> two different people in the story here no, that, that Harry guy kids. has definitely got so there's two kids right um all right, so I'm rolling with this guy. He had the ring when we had to sit out. When he finally came back, we are rolling. Stuart Cooper was filming it. Yeah. And I put him in an esteemer lock. But and I, <laughs> it was on for a long time. Like we were just literally making eye contact. Because Stuart was filming. I still haven't got the video of Stuart. But then it you just popped to eventually. It, the kid made it eye was like maybe. told you, fucking break it. Break it off. <laughs> it was maybe five seconds he was in a foot lock. Oh, and man. then it popped. But it didn't pop that bad. He wasn't in pain at the time. But then the next, I told him it would be bad. The next day he showed up, swollen ankle. And then later that week when he got drunk, one of the guys got fuck Craig Jones tattooed on his butt cheeks. But because yeah. I popped that guy's ankle, he got it tattooed on his broken ankle. Okay. Hey, the kid has a memory now. Yeah. He's going to always remember Craig Jones breaking his ankle. Traumatic. Like a dick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so back on with ADCC, man, just run down who, who was your first match? And how did that shit go down? Run me through All the right. tournament. I'm curious how this shit rolls over there. All right. So because the ADCC previous, I was uh, I finished fourth. Right. They made me the fourth seed for this one. Okay. So the seedings go off the previous ADCC. It doesn't go off your ranks throughout the mainly off ADCC. But if okay. there's not enough guys that did it, then they'll they'll figure it out. And they'll put the uh, probably the best guy at the top. But then obviously Gordon he moved up a division. Shanji was injured, and uh, who came? I should know who came third. <laughs> My memory is slipping me right now. Keenan? Keenan. Keenan yeah. came. Oh, Keenan came second. Shanji came third, right? Okay. So Because he beat you in the bronze medal match. Beat me in the bronze. No, Keenan uh, beat me in the semis. No, Shanji beat Shanji. me in the bronze. Yeah, yeah. So all, none of those three guys were in it. Keenan had moved up, and obviously he had pulled out due to the EKC. <laughs> so without those guys in it, it made me number one seed. Right. So they gave me the European trials when I first round. Typically, they give you the Asian trials because we suck the most in the world. For <laughs> Shout out to Australasia. <laughs> <Yeah. with things. laughs> so I had Ben Dyson. And Ben Dyson was huge. If you saw, he had a match against Nicky Rod uh, at Polaris, and he looked ginormous. He had to cut a lot of weight for this match. He's a, I don't know, I think he's very good at front headlock and stuff, but uh, it was a bit of a problem, but I was able to get the heel hook eventually. Right. The second match was a uh, Kyle Terra brown belt. Okay. But a, a very active competitor. I think he's a former wrestler, Mason Fowler. Okay. And Mason is the guy I gave EKC to, but he didn't care because he was like, I would have competed with it. <laughs> but he was a real tough match. There was probably even a moment in the match where he should have scored two points, but I think the uh, the referees missed it. So I, I get an off rally on this one. Scoring at ADCC. I know there was a lot of shit. You had an issue with it. Uh, Vinny Magalhães had an issue with the, with the scoring on the takedowns and pulling guard where they were giving guys yeah, points, take points off, of, off of... It, 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 can you run through that? What, 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 do you agree with the, with the way they were doing that shit, or does it make any sense? They want to encourage wrestling, so they want to make it difficult for you to just come out and sit guard. So uh, <laughs> for, <laughs> for this, so ADCC, they, uh, <clears throat> after halfway through the match, you can't pull guard, and the finals, you can't pull guard without taking a negative. Okay. 
But um, yeah, so you have to basically shoot, attempt a takedown for three seconds, and then end up on your back, and that they won't count that as a guard pull. So you have to you have to fully attempt, penetrate, make the make like a shot, go almost old Jeff Monson style, shoot in yeah. and then pull in on like has, half guard. Kind has of to deal. be an honest attempt. Yeah, if they think you just shoot and sit back, oh no, yeah, the Damian Maya shit would not work, fellas. It's not gonna go. It would not work. <laughs> so, but saying that in the final with Denise, you obviously then sort of got up because you were on the ground. You got up uh, and then reengaged and then shot. Ended up on your back, but you, he got given takedown points. Didn't yeah, you? I mean, maybe, was... uh, to be honest, I haven't rewatched that traumatic match yet. <laughs> yeah. Mainly because it was such a fucking boring match. Yeah. but um, I tried to watch it a second time, but I was <laughs> like, no, I'm just... <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I heard some people say that maybe it should have been a negative. Had it been a negative for me for the guard point or the takedown, it would have been would have a gone draw. To overtime, yeah. Well, we already did overtime. Maybe a second overtime. Yeah, because yeah. that would have been a negative each, wouldn't it? Yeah, that, so we would have. We were already thirty minutes deep, so that would have been another ten minute overtime period, which would so have been horrible. Do, do you reckon they're giving too much, too much credence to the ref, making the refs make too many decisions on that sort of stuff, then, and not letting guys grapple too much, or is it is it working well, the right way now? Or they have a team of guys. So I beat Jeff. The guy in the middle decides the points. Right. In ADCC, the guy in the middle just decides restarts and when the tap's on, and okay. the guys on the sidelines decide the points. So okay. there'll be a few guys on the sidelines discuss the transition, and then as a group, they decide whether the points were scored or not. So then it's not so much, say, the competitors aren't going to complain to the referee right, right there. The refs so are actually you're not going to be jawing on with the ref that's out there during the match because they're not the one making the yeah, calls. Yeah, they're not calling points, and the coaches on the side aren't going to be uh, criticizing the ref in the middle, which you see commonly like IBGF events, you know right, what I mean? Right. That's not the guy in charge. That's just the guy keeping people safe. He's just a figurehead out there. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, well, we derailed you on that, so we keep running through that match. And then on to, All right. so, you, so you had that one, then you moved on. Yeah, I had the Mason Fowler one. So, yeah, he probably should have got two. Uh, and then later in the match, he shot, and I was able to get a guillotine. And luckily, ADCC as well, they don't give a fuck about the boundaries. Right. So if you hit a sub and we go out of bounds, they just let it go. So does yeah. that go for takedowns as well? You could blast double yeah. somebody off the mat, clean into the clean yeah, into the stands. Yeah, if the takedown began in the mats and you finish it outside the mats. Oh, shit. But if you run a guy out of, out of bounds and then shoot, they won't count it. Okay. But yeah, they let they let the submission go, provided it's safe and stuff. Okay. There were a couple of near misses with people hitting tables, but uh, for the I don't think Felipe Pena missed the table, did yeah, he? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. With Caval. Yeah, that yeah, was lucky pretty. Was Some just... of the, the takedowns were crazy, like off the mat, and then you saw people still trying to scramble on the concrete. Yeah, people take but, advantage of that stuff. Hey, some yeah. of the uh, more seasoned Brazilian competitors are good at playing the rules like that, for sure. Yeah. But then, yeah, I was able to finish Mason Fowler out of bounds. Day two. Day two was pretty crazy because I was the second match of the day but the first matches was like uh, Gordon Ryan, Lucas Barbosa, Nick Rodriguez, Cyborg, and Boucher Shikane, which would all be main events of any yeah. super fight show, all down for the first matches of the day. Wow. So it was good seeing those before I competed. The crowd was going pretty crazy. And I had John Blank. So that was my uh, semi final match. And I always say this about John Blank. He's actually got a full time job. And he made it to the uh, day two ADCC, which is pretty crazy. That's insane. I think to, to a guy that works the works a full time nine to five to be out there grappling with guys like you or Gordon Ryan, yeah. and shit like that. Full time like, job, and he's about to open his own gym. So it's like uh, he's a busy man to be a. a I'll never understand with, with you see it so much with jujitsu cats, especially like go down to St Kilda where you boys are based at out here, and you got just these absolute murderers on the mat. And then we're going to hit the showers. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go take a nap because I don't got to train again for a couple hours. These dudes are these dudes are suiting up their ties to go to work and shit. It's like y'all, these jujitsu cats are savages with that shit. Yeah, <laughs> something about like the brain, the mindset. I reckon that like high level jujitsu guys get that, that allows them to fucking just continue like in their everyday life. That whereas like in MMA and show like that you don't see it. We're we're lazy bastards. Like if it look, could, what? it could also be because. They don't get paid. Oh. <laughs> to Forgot about job. that. You guys don't make any money. <laughs> oh, he does. This you guy makes yeah. yeah. sure yeah. well, I was going to say, they're putting on their suit. I don't think the jiu-jitsu guys are working jobs in suit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, going, they're going to the acai place. Yeah. 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 Scoops. I want to make coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Doing up their subway singlet. So you, yeah, subway singlet. So you, so you got him second round. Uh, yeah, the semi, so the semifinals beat John Blank. And then, yeah, I was on to the finals. Obviously, uh, the match with Mateus Denise really... Uh, Irritated my eye, right. <clears throat> so I couldn't uh, I couldn't go on to do the open weight because my eye was really leaking everywhere and shit, and people were uh, getting quite upset about that. <laughs> the eye was extra bad too because ADCC you have to make weight three days in a row. No shit. So you have to make weight Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So make you make weight Friday so that they know you can make the weight, and if they need to get a replacement, okay, they can get a replacement. So yeah. I had to cut three kilos every day. So I was sitting in the sauna and the hot air eating my 
hitting my eye was fucking grease and eye up and just leaking so you have to to make the same hit every day there's no growth pound or anything like that they gave us uh one extra kilo on friday man but we could make weight uh we could weigh in at 5 45 a.m okay saturday sunday refeed up hydrate up but then like say you have a hard match you know you got you you have a real hard first round match you can't go out and have a big feed or a big drink or anything after that because you gotta Uh, gotta make weight the next day yeah, exactly. Here That's insane. The idea of, like, I, I just put it in my perspective of, of fighting. Like, if I had to fight, if I had to make weight, eat and everything, and then go the next day and make weight again before I fought, yeah, it's, it's an absolute fucking game changer. You have to be careful. Yeah, we eat on a Saturday. I was already messed up because um, the, there's some medication they give you for the eye, right? Right. And the uh, medic on hand, uh, after Saturday, he just loaded me up with it, right? Right. So, like, obviously, so in case they wouldn't kick me out on day two, right? But... I think it's some sort of steroid it's to, like, take the swelling yeah, down. Portico steroid type of deal. Yeah, so he loaded oh. me up with that. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we are talking about Abu Dhabi here. We're ADCC. Hey, uh, okay. okay, Gordon did have a good call about this. He said, ADCC, where even your eyes are on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's savage. But, yeah, he loaded me up. But it had some s- sort of a stimulant effect on me. Okay. So, like, uh, he loaded me up at 5 p.m. Saturday. I laid in bed until 5 a.m. Sunday. Didn't sleep a wink, just wide awake. Which, which is great, right before you're going into ADCC. <laughs> yeah. the biggest, biggest tournament of your life. <laughs> that's, and then that's the, great al- idea. the alarm hits, and I'm like, all right, back to the sauna to cut weight. <laughs> what yeah, some, he said it shouldn't get into my bloodstream, but it definitely did get into my bloodstream. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, it's Doc. to me. Appreciate that. <laughs> that's wild. I, I never knew that about the weight, the weight checks with that. That's That seems outlandish. Like, I guess that, that would explain why some of those dudes that are just clearly on the Brazilian supplements to the tits are only doing the super fights. They're not having to make weight three days in a row. <laughs> yeah. Most of the super fights, I don't think, have a weight limit. Is that anyway. they're, they're just, on open weight on Just open yeah. weight, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. they'll do the uh, open weight, uh, sort of the absolute division, the open weight. Whoever wins that will face the super fight winner. Oh, okay. And it's just a open weight is. title. Mm-hmm. So next time it'll be uh, Andre Gabal and Gordon Ryan. Right. Providing Andre stays in the sport. Yeah. Because how many super... He's done the super fight now for four, eight years. Yeah, I believe four, he won f- double gold 2011. He beat Braulio 2013, Cyborg 2015. 2017, he beat Claudio Calasanz. And then, obviously, recently, he beat Philippe Pena. Yeah. <clears throat> how do you reckon that fight goes between... Uh, I can't believe I just called it a fight. I'm going to have to punish myself later. <laughs> um, how do you reckon that goes between him and Gordon? Because, I mean, he's a, that dude is a mountain of a man. But I watched it. I, that is one of the, ma- the matches I did watch. And it seemed like he was all just beating the hell out of collar ties the whole time, just, just slapping the shit out of each other, trying to see whose cams were working better. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a tricky match. Hey, yeah. Gavel's, uh I mean, the guy's very good. I'm not taking anything away from yeah, him. I'm just saying yeah. what I saw as a non-educated observer. I am a blue belt. I don't know shit about shit. So. <laughs> well, to me, it just looked like Andre Gavel came in in the best shape of his life. Yeah. More well prepared yeah. than anyone else, really. The, probably the whole event. Yeah, and I mean, Philippe was, Pena definitely didn't look to be in the same shape, or didn't yeah. seem to want it as bad as Andre Gabal. Yeah, that's what I, it just. Gabal was mean. very aggressive with his. That, that's what I'm saying. He was coming yeah. forward and snapping down, and really, you could tell he yeah. was getting after it. I mean, he was keeping a pace. But how do you reckon if, if that's the next one's him and Gordon for that? How do you reckon that one goes down? I'd have to think uh, Gordon Ryan will have the physical attributes to match Andre Gabal and yep. probably uh, a technical advantage in terms of modern jiu-jitsu. Right. You know what I mean? So I would probably lean towards Gordon Ryan getting it. Plus, Andre Gabal is getting older, even though he looks younger every year. <laughs> found the found the youth, baby. <laughs> <laughs> So what do you think about the ADCC scoring system? Because I, I don't know what percentages. I should actually, I don't know, maybe uh, maybe Dennis can get us the numbers. But like, hey, pull that up for us, Dennis. Uh, <laughs> what number of fights actually went to like uh, were decided in like uh, had to go to overtime so there's no points scored in regulation and how many were like rest decisions? Because I would have said more than 50% of the matches easily went to overtime. Like there was no points or submission scored. Do you think there's any issue with the way the points are um it's getting better in terms of 2015 my first adcc where well, there was barely any submissions at all i yeah. might have been one of the few guys to get submitted very, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very quickly yeah. Yeah. but yeah it's That's getting better. Bro? is that yeah, yeah yeah that yeah. bastard um <laughs> yeah, yeah but uh that was getting... when you're like 72 kilos in the 88 <laughs> kilo division. yeah i was pretty really live for that one yeah but um yeah, I think the subs are getting better because you can see like uh, the guys that get the most fame from ADCC and reap the most rewards are the guys that get the submissions. You guys yeah. have to go and, ch- and chase and shit. I mean, these yeah. guys are going out and trying to fight. I mean, I think that's that's part of the reason 
that uh, yourself, uh, Lockie out here, and some of these other guys, uh, Gary Tone and things like that, cats are going out there and they're chasing shit. They're not going out there and just trying to, you know, belly button wrestle and hold dudes down. Because I reckon a lot of these guys are getting that. And this could just be my outside perspective on it, but you get those big dudes that are kind of that more old school, just want to put them out the fresh and just, yeah. Well, yeah well, just if you, if I think that's better even than just standing and like uh, basically just trying to snap it. Like, around. not even bad wrestling, yeah. Just bad. But like, I mean, what, there's what, a lot of those where it was just people collar tying for. What was the numbers that you said? Cool. I mean, you told me when Craig and them got back that um, I think so. But squad had the, the, we had on par the amount of uh, submissions. Yeah, days. so I think Henzo's, it depends on where you count. I think there was one article, but where the, <laughs> where in the article the count, it put you into Henzo's. But uh, if it was absolute, then we would have got, you and Lockie got six subs and Henzo's nine. But then I think like Alliance and Atos just don't quite remember this was like three or four or two or three Atos had five yeah okay. so they were um, the next most submissions yeah and what about Alliance and stuff like I don't maybe only two or something yeah I'm not sure I mean it's, it's definitely the times have changed like if you want to sell DVDs you're not going to sell DVDs by doing nothing yeah. you know what I mean no one wants to know how to do anti-jiu-jitsu you know yeah. what I mean yeah. yeah no one wants how to how to stall really yeah yeah it's like uh, people don't want to know how to finish it no one cares about that shit. I think it's more important how you win than uh, what you win these days. That's same yeah, sense, actually. Yeah, because obviously you've got you get invited for super fights everywhere because you actually go after stuff and try and chase. Although I probably have had the worst super fight in grappling history too. Is that th oh, there's quite a few I can call? <laughs> so I'm trying to think. Which, is it Baharis or Baharis would be number yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. yeah so that can uh, nice. it goes both ways? Obviously. <laughs> yeah. I try to go after it, but. Uh, if someone's intent on installing you out though and not really engaging, it's it's it, that can be hard to. Yeah, the hard thing is, is when you know they want you to overcommit through their passivity. Yeah, but you're sort of too. You're like ah, oh, you know what I mean? It's hard to find the opening. Well, to the Baharis is a real threat because you don't know that he's actually. If he, he does go, catch you, he's not going. He ain't gonna let go of that shit. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. takes your home with him. Yeah, yeah, and so. yeah, and he's uh, he greases up. He yeah, he does a lot of. Uh, what, what happened with, I still remember talking to you about the uh, the weight you know at one stage you're aiming for 90 kilos oh, yeah. and 100 kilos wait, wait, and it was like then it was like 110 <laughs> and then it was like yeah so he's not going to make 110 we signed the contract for 190 pounds and then about two weeks before the event I saw a photo circulating of him and he looked about 300 pounds <laughs> yeah. and I said to Hull as the promoter I was like man is he going to make weight does he know like we're weighing in 190 this ain't an open weight fight baby Hollis joked back with me he's like no way he's gonna make weight and then he was like ha ha nah he was gonna make weight don't worry about it so then I get there to the event and Hollis is like alright he's got a note from his doctor that says if he has to cut weight he will die he almost died last time and he's 220 pounds fuck out of here so that sounds like a personal then, problem bro yeah <laughs> and then if he dies he dies did he make the 220 <laughs> He made 220 day before, but we didn't weigh him on the day. Okay, fair enough. And he clearly had sucked down to get there for that 220. I don't know. I don't know. He's crazy. Uh, he's not that tall. No. no. I saw him backstage because I fought on World Series shows with him, World Series of Fighting, yeah. and when he was making 170, and he would be he would be backstage on weigh-in day looking. That's 170. So that's that's uh, 77 Seven, kilos. Yeah. And he's tiny little fellow. But then you see him the next day, and he is just, just back Well, up. he made 170. The year I faced him. So he had an MMA fight at 170. Yeah, I think he that might have been weight. when you were still in World Series. I kind of remember this going down. He missed weight, so he was 172. Yeah. Imagine being 172 in March and showing up at 220 like three <laughs> months later and being like, I can't even make 190. It's not even going to happen. Yeah. I mean, I can kind of wrap my head around that a little bit personally. <laughs> <laughs> but Yeah, but he was in different conditions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Where you put he's, up 50 he's pounds. A, he, my, my, my 50 pounds is all, all piss. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, what do you think? I'm, I'm curious. I ask a lot, a lot of the grappler cats about this. What, what, what is your preferred rule set when it comes down to it? Do you like the Abu Dhabi rule set? Do you like the EDI which, shit? Which, whichever one I win in. <laughs> Fucking hey, bro. Hey, that's a, look at this big song bitch right here. And look, look, at, look at the man next to him. Paul, Paul Harris has got to be, got, what? He's. He's got to be 250, 260 there. Jesus. <laughs> Juicy we don't, we don't endorse that. Um, <laughs> He's got the uh, warrior haircut, eh? Yeah, savage. I love that mustache. Like, I would not want to run into that dude on the back street in Brazil, that's for sure. He, he plays it up, too. He pretends like he... Because uh, obviously everyone... The rumors are that he's like a bit slow intellectually or something, mm. right? But he definitely plays that up for the rules. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, he acts like he, he, like he doesn't understand. He's self-aware enough to know that that's what people think, really? so he takes uh, liberties a, with it. That's the next level of intelligence, though. If you're really, if you're really thinking like at the like the thought side of the game, like if you know people think that you're a bit slow on the uptake, then you play into that a bit. It's like, oh, sorry, I that's why after his matches, I, he's like, I did not understand that I have to let go of the the submission. <laughs> you know, back towards you, you break, it's done. 
<laughs> yeah. And Brazilians. Ooh, I got that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Chicago. <laughs> Um, so then, what? Then we got in the finals match. If we keep on bouncing around, uh, the finals yeah. match with Denise, yeah, which was just a. I know we've actually had two matches previous. Yeah, one I won by decision, but really no one won. That was a shit match. Yeah. it was like a twenty minute match. Nothing happened. Second match, he won takedown and overtime. I think we had a match for like nine minutes, and then um, <clears throat> this latest one was thirty minutes. Thirty minutes, fucking hell. Thirty minutes, which is it's difficult because it's like a rep. ADCC is. Basically, they want the rules to appeal to wrestlers. In okay. the final, you can't pull guard at any point. But how many wrestlers could have a 30-minute wrestling match? Flat out can't do it. The way you people wrestle for college and freestyle and stuff yeah. it's is for, yeah, yeah. Three-minute rounds. <laughs> if you told those guys to have a 30-minute match, the style would completely change. Yeah. So that's the trickiest that's thing to wrap your head around for. The, uh, who was the kid, the wrestler kid? Out of, he was out of Henzo's, I reckon. He was a oh, Nicky Rudd. Rudd. Fucking hell, that, that for a wrestler, blue belt, you know, ain't too bad. Man. And he's not, apparently. He got, he, he got his purple belt on the podium. <laughs> next he, to Bechesha. I don't he, know. I think, he, don't he, think that was. No, a no, he's bitch. He only did one season of wrestling. No shit. And he was Division Three. Okay. So he wasn't, not even a high, for like people that don't get what that means, he's not necessarily a high level wrestler. Not Division One. Just very American. athletic. Just an <laughs> athletic man. What um? So before we get on your next fight, what is your thoughts on the combat jujitsu? I'm I've been, I'm always in Simon's ear and Danny's <laughs> ear about trying to. I'm, I'm gonna get Craig on rising. I'm gonna get him over there. Maybe, <laughs> guys, see, what do you think about what do you think about that combat jujitsu stuff that uh, Eddie Eddie Bravo and those cats are doing? I like it. I like. I mean, like when I roll with Simon, he taps so much it feels like combat <laughs> jujitsu. <laughs> uh, uh, um, yeah, I like it. It's. It, I guess it's entertaining. I like the overtime rule set. I yeah. think you really see who's a better all round grappler. Right. And you see some. Uh, <laughs> In the cage. That's, we're definitely gonna put that one. <laughs> What um so what what do, you, what do you if somebody was asked you about transitioning or not transitioning necessarily let's say you know a guy that you sit in a room with right now who might have a connection in, in Japan to get you maybe a fight up there uh, an MMA fight yeah brother yeah. would that be Give something you'd be interested in I, th I think your style especially because like we were talking about before you're not a stally jujitsu guy you go in and you go attacking shit well could I, I get the same contract Gabby Garcia did and fight some old women Shingo. <laughs> Let's holler at my boy. Yeah. Let's holler at my boy. Craig Jones, Aussie takeover up there. <laughs> what, what do you reckon would be the key to a transit, a solid transition to you? Like, or for not just for you, for any MMA guy or any high level jujitsu competitor, if they want to go to MMA, what, what type of shit is different? Would you, what would you suggest to like for them to work on? Well, I guess just preparing for the ADCC rule set. I think those, that rule set better prepares you for MMA right. because it forces you to work on positions that might come up in MMA. Okay. Compared to uh, the IBJJF and stuff like that, right? But uh, I don't think MMA is really good for uh, grapplers. Like even if I, even if I trained right now with like a, a pretty good purple belt, and you said, "All right, you got five minutes to take him down, not get say stood back up and submit him." Yeah, it's not enough time. Like they, the fact that they shorten the rounds from back in the old days right. is just shut out the game for grapplers. I mean, I reckon there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of argument from the grappling community that the shorter rounds go to favor uh, strikers and stuff. Oh, for sure, go, yeah. When you look at the original, Craig's talking about the original UFCs or got the, uh, the original uh, Pride stuff back in Japan back in the day, it was either no time, it was no time limit or very or Pride, you know, 10-minute rounds where you had, I mean, there was a, what was it? It was, it was Henzo and uh, Sakuraba had, what, the 90-minute match? Uh, Sakuraba and uh, Hoist. Hoist, there yeah. we go. Yeah. For minutes. days and days. But like like you said, if, if you can't drag a guy into, if you get a guy, just get him down, and it's yeah, five, five minutes up, the next round starts standing up. That's a real pain in the ass for grapplers. I sure. Or you could take him down, and he could just hold on, and you get stood back up. Right. But like a 10-minute opening round. That should have, they should have kept that. Yeah, I, I, fought, I fought once with the 10-minute round in Japan, and it's a bastard. As a, as a striking-based guy, it's a bastard to train for. Yeah, it'd be hard to. Pacing. I get it. Yeah, What's that? <laughs> <laughs> just that, just that pacing. Like, and it's, I think it's something that you would, as a, as a grappler, would be pretty used to. Like, you know, going out and you know setting traps and doing shit like that. Whereas, as a striker, you go out and it's like, all right, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, and I'm tired as fuck. And that, granted, that happens in five minute rounds for me as well. Yeah, five. <laughs> like I would, like Kasai grappling to six minute rounds, and yeah. I feel like six minutes creates an urgency right. where you're more likely to make a mistake. So if it was like, if I had to have an MMA fight and it was a five minute round and it was two minutes into the round, I'd be like, I feel like I have to make something happen. You know what I mean? Maybe take a sloppy shot Yeah. Ra rather than have a full 10 minute rounds to really yeah. pace it out. That is interesting. What do you, um, what do you think about like the, the, the change 
in grappling and jiu-jitsu recently. I know, like, you, like I just, you know, around the gyms and around the jiu-jitsu world and shit, whenever I'm around, you kind of get this this feeling that, like, the old heads of jiu-jitsu really hate the new game. They really, you know, you hear, I can't tell you how many yeah. times I've heard old jiu-jitsu guys yelling at people, like, if you forget, you, you're not just leg lock guy, you need ju jiu-jitsu. Do you, do, you, do you feel like, like, there's a, there's a bit of, like, a kind of a... a, a, a I guess you could say like a battle between like the old style of jiu-jitsu and the new style. And what do you, what, what do you, what do you think? Like, is it better for people for the new style? I think it's always, it's generally always that way. Whether it was like deep half guard, 50, 50 guard, beer and bolo, worm guard or leg locks. Now yeah. the older generation always hated it. Cause I feel like they get to black belt. They don't want to learn anything new. Right. You know what I mean? They run their own team. They like, uh, don't want to have to learn all this modern stuff. But I feel like it's extra bad right now. Cause the guys that are great at leg locks are very, very vocal and provoking <laughs> the older shit. guys yeah yeah and probably the only guys that make any real money in the sport from instructional products and stuff like that right. are the vocal are the vocal leg gringos yeah. yeah yeah vocal gringos he said <laughs> man that's that's wild and you know, we'll talk about like, i was gonna say speaking of which like obviously Lockie had a great performance at adc not that he's a vocal gringo <laughs> <laughs> more vocal he's, a, he's an online uh, <laughs> online battle a little bit with uh gordon ryan at the yeah, moment yeah. um uh, so obviously, I think he's put up. Gordon said he'll put, put up, up half a million, million dollars, Jesus. and Lockie only has to put up five of his own money. So for a five hundred and five thousand dollar super fight, do you reckon that will That's happen? Not, I don't or? think that'll happen. Okay. Hypothetically, that that fight goes down. God, I said fight again. Hypothetically, that goes down. How do you reckon that one plays out? Gordon Ryan and <laughs> well, the problem is, even if Lockie did catch his heel, yeah, Gordon's not going to tap. You know what I mean? You're dealing with a, a psychopathic winner yeah. versus a guy that has a school to run, wants to, he understands what's going to happen if he doesn't tap. You right. know what I mean? Whereas like, Gordon's on the other end of the spectrum. You got one guy that's obviously a lot bigger. Lucky had his move at ADCC that caught a lot of people by surprise, obviously. And it, Lucky, Lucky's trying to argue that he maybe caught Gordon by surprise and got a bite on the hill. Mm where I think he did have the element of surprise going into ADCC. And I yeah. think if you're going to, if Gordon's going to put up half a million dollars, I wouldn't tap half a million dollars. Fuck no. Take you know what I mean? Home, so it's like, you're going to be dealing with a crazy person, but that match definitely not going to happen. No one's going to put up half a million. I, I noticed that uh, Gordon came back with a whole lot, another <laughs> set of criteria that he had to then basically four more matches against other junior squad members and with a 10 grand payout or something, if he doesn't do them or something. Yeah. So it looks like it might be dead in the world. Might be dead be, in the water. But, and but I don't know. It was Well, that's the thing with Gordon, right? Gordon's almost so good that yeah. people have lost interest. Yeah. Just Not like lost interest in him, but lost interest in, uh, like, Lockie's had a spark, like I did in 2017, because it was from nowhere yeah. to suddenly becoming right. um, well-known, right? When Gordon's at the top and everyone expects him to win and all he does is win, John Jones yeah. is suddenly John people are look, yeah, looking yeah. around for another story. So yeah. I feel like Gordon creates something out of this. Right. To keep to the attention going. God, it would be, it would be, can you imagine being so good that nobody gives a shit anymore? Yeah. <laughs> so I reckon <laughs> Gordon obviously d double gold uh, for ADCC and Lockie's bronze. I don't know. Obviously, I'm probably seeing more of Lockie's stuff online because of where I'm at, but um, it seems to be Lockie's almost got more press from his bronze than what Gordon did with oh, double for gold. For sure. The underdog victory is always going to carry more heat in the media. Yeah. And especially because Gordon's painted himself as the villain. Yeah. And Lockie's obviously paints himself as uh, the small, obviously it looks that way, the small hero entering absolute, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Look at that. So Perfect recipe. What do you just, mean looks that way, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> You're insinuating that he's not. I, I feel like everyone portrays himself in a certain light on social media. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So obviously they're calling him the giant killer. He's going to play it up. Yeah. Like now he wears long sleeve rash guards, so we don't know he's Jack. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a secret Jack. He's a secret Jack. Now, huh? <laughs> he's, been wearing, he's been wearing the long sleeve ones for a fair while. As Probably to dodge staff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or to cover staff. You never know. So uh, we just pulled up over here. Gordon Ryan calling out John Jones in a grappling match. Says the only grappling match the world wants to see. I'm going to go out on a limb and disagree. I have no desire to see that because it's this too different. Two thousand sports. Two thousand. I was pulling up old shit. Yeah. Anyway, so what, Craig, what, what's coming up next for you, bro? What's, what's next in the Craig Jones world? Uh, all I've got booked is, oh, sorry, i got two matches booked. i got a match against Adam Wojcicki, a Polish grappler. Yeah. That'll be in the UK. And then i got a match with Dean Lister in Portland. Big Dean. 
put up a case of beer for the winter. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think earlier things. in the show we did mention, because that was my understanding, that you oh, have the Luke Rockhold match. Yeah, we were that. working for the Rockhold match, but it fell through in the end, sadly. Okay. But I have That's trained with Luke Rockhold. I think a lot of people, had we announced that match, would have assumed it would be a very easy match for me. But having trained with him, he's very, very good. He's a big athletic man. Yeah, super I mean, strong. Super but strong. you said he has a bad leg Gorgeous after he trained with you. That's <laughs> like, you said that he you destroyed his knee training <laughs> or something. Like. He has a, a bad leg from, I think, kicking Yoel Romero. <laughs> yeah, so that man is made of steel. What do you, stay, sticking in the vein of Luke Rockhold, what do uh, what do you think of his UFC run? You think that cat keeps going? You think where, where he's at now? You think, you think 93 kgs or 205 pounds is a spot for him? I don't know. I mean, I, th I feel like he's probably looking to get into grappling now. Really? They were trying to get him to do ADCC because his wrestling would be a good skill set for him for ADCC, but he was on medical suspension from the um, – who did he get knocked out by? Uh, Jan Blankowitz, the big yeah, so Polish was, murderer. He only just came out of medical suspension, so he wouldn't have been able to prepare for ADCC. Okay. That surprised me. I always would have thought if, if Rockhold was going to do a crossover, it would have been probably into kickboxing or something like that. I guess, though, once you've had a career in professional mixed martial arts, going over and fighting higher-level strikers and sacrificing your brain for far less money probably <laughs> isn't that and smart. He's, and he's modeling. Like, he's, Luke Rockhold's got a lot Look, of other stuff. I'm just going to put this out there. Luke Rockhold is a beautiful, beautiful man. <laughs> he's on my list of dudes. <laughs> um, and... 50% and 50% in Thailand. <laughs> and half the dudes in Thailand. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh, so um, one other thing. Quintet. So being out in Japan, all this shit goes down all the time. They got all these different things going on. What do you think about Absolute putting together a quintet style? A quint quintet? Qu quintet? How many in the How now, Brad? I learned that there are five in a quintet because it's Quinn. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's five. What do you think about Does that be something you'd be interested in to go do a five on five? And who would you take if you had to do an Absolute or make your own super team? Give All right. Options. Well, I mean, I don't know if I meant to announce this yet, but as far as I know, I don't think uh, Quintet is going to continue doing grapplers in no. their events. I think it's going to be more of an MMA crossover MMA thing. MMA-centric, guys? Yeah. Oh. So I think that's, I think that's <laughs> where that's... Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> I, I think that's where that's heading. Um, who would I have in my team? Yeah. <sighs> Obviously... Lachlan Giles. <laughs> <laughs> A.K.A. the giant killer. The giant killer. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, the last time he ran the floor for the BJJ, no, he did the... Yeah, the that's right. did, yeah, did yeah. team kind of thing, yeah. That's yeah. probably what discouraged him from putting retired MMA fighters in grappling <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because it, it, was, it was... Of the retired MMA guys, it was Joe Riggs, Chris, Chris Lytle, Lytle, Rico Rodriguez. But none, none of them are jiu-jitsu guys. I mean, maybe you can make the argument Rico, Rico. but like... I'm, I don't think that. He hasn't yeah, <laughs> trains, yeah, for a long time, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, uh, Mancha was a good win to get first. Mancha was, yeah. yeah. Those, that's, that's, we knew Mancha was going to go first, so we put Lockie first, give him a chance to avenge the loss, which obviously he did. Yeah. And then it was just um, a matter of, I guess, the MMA guys trying to survive. Right. Yeah. Just trying, From that point on. <laughs> just swimming, trying to. Trying to survive, yeah. What, as far, and like, we were talking about so MMA you've only guys. mentioned one member, though, like, uh, of this yeah, absolute yeah, team. Well, that's all we need. That's all you need. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There is such a difference between, like, high-level grapplers in your game and guys who we consider good grapplers in MMA. Yeah. And this last weekend, we had Damian Maya take on Ben Askren. Before we go to the clips or anything, I want to know what, what your thoughts are of, of, on both of them, just as grapplers. I, I think great Damian Maya, personally, I think he's a great grappler. I've never thought he's been that great in MMA. Ben Askren doesn't do much for me, but you, as one of the top grapplers in the world, if some would say the best. <laughs> what, do you, uh, what, what are your thoughts on these guys? Uh, well, I, what surprised me with Damian Meyer is I only found out the other day he's now what, second most wins in UFC history. Wild, yeah. isn't it? I think he's and got he already, 20 wins or just, something. Just yeah. riding under the radar. <laughs> and he already had a career in grappling before. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because he won second Color of Gold at ADCC. He yeah. won ADCC in 2005, I believe. Jesus. Yeah. He's an old man now. Yeah, what is he, 42, 43? 42, I think, yeah, something like that. It's crazy, pretty old for... Um, pretty pretty old to be competing at the level he's competing at now in a viciously tested USADA <laughs> UFC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, honestly, yeah, no, all bullshit aside, that's fucking impressive. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can't take anything. Well, I always think if uh, Yoel Romero passed tests, why are we even testing? Fucking A, brother. <laughs> Church. <laughs> Thanks, Jesus. <laughs> when, and then uh, the big one, the guy who makes more noise, though, is Ben Askren. Ben Askren came over. He was a high-level American wrestler. Um, 
was doing really big things over in 1FC, if you can consider those big things. Yeah, I said it. Um, <laughs> but what, what, what are your thoughts on him as a grappler? I know he had the um, he had the grapple the guard match against, that was a wrestling match, though, oh, against, against Burroughs. Jordan Burroughs. So that's that a bit was, different. I mean, yeah. but we all saw what happened in that. He got just, he got Jordan Burroughs. He wrestled Jordan Burroughs. Yeah. And then that but, gonna, that gonna happen. <laughs> Ben's probably biggest accomplishment is getting out of a 1FC contract. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here, folks. Don't sign with 1FC. <laughs> <laughs> you might be the uh, only guy ever. You have the option. <laughs> 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 But, but yeah, yeah Ben's, was, Ben's obviously pretty impressive. Uh, he's been asleep in all three of his MMA fights, but he did win one of just them. Just like the spectators. UFC fights. Right? No. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> no, I said just like the spectators. <laughs> you said that. Yeah. Do you um? Would you consider? Would you consider him to be a? Because he is the dude is hyped, and like you look at him, he doesn't look doesn't look like your typical MMA fighter. Doesn't look like your typical dude out of ADC. He looks like some dad out back barbecuing in a pair of New Balances and some jeans with some grass stains. Right, you got the yeah. dad bod out there, but he he, he did DC though. And yeah, he, he but does the right. dude moves the needle though. Is the point of yeah, the yeah. moves the needle. Do you think he's overrated, or do you think his talent is deserving of what the, the, the credit that he gets? I don't. He pretty just goes like I still think that Masvidal fight. I think if they fought a hundred times, I think it's probably fight, I Ben remember. probably wins most of those. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think yeah. Ben would do very very well against Usman or Colby Covington. Yeah, he just had obviously very unlucky just. Masvidal. <laughs> uh, obviously uh, Damian Meyer. It just, I don't know what happened in that match. I don't know if Ben got tired or something. But uh, Damian uh, my fight? Yeah. Well, you know, they, it, was, it was pretty back and forth. It was, it, was, it was the typical matchup, I reckon, that you get between two high-level strikers or two high-level grapplers, excuse me, that then decide that that's going to be negated, so we're going to have the sloppiest boxing match you ever see. It looks like some shit you could have seen on Hex out here just at the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. level. Uh, just, uh, just, just, just see how many people we can Just <laughs> crap. <laughs> um, but anyway, the, um, Simon actually made a, pre a prediction that the way this was going to go down. And it actually ended up going that way. Simon, before we play, before we play the clip, say exactly. Oh, what well, I, what I said I thought Ash going to be able to get the takedown, but Mai's really good at sweeping, sweeping over yeah. and would sweep. Ash going to do the rest to try get up, probably turn at some stage, and Mai take his back and choke him. So that's what I was. But so, so we, but Simon, you could actually when we watch this, you could learn a thing or two about back control. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but where but, to put your yeah, feet? Yeah, right? you will notice they're both <laughs> outside the hips. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we're, we're going to play this clip, and I want you to kind of run that through. Before. <laughs> I, want, I want you to run through what, what Damien's doing good here. Oh, he's elevated. looks like he's trying to – I don't know. He, went, he set up a heel hook position, but it looked yeah. like he was maybe just baiting it. So uh, Ben asked him to give a reaction. Baiting it to ride it up? Yeah, because, I mean, it's very, very hard to hit outside heel hook in, in grappling or MMA. You right. know what I mean? I feel like he just put the – it's just not there. What and what? If you could run that back a bit, what 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 should Askren have, have done differently there uh, when he when he was getting hit with that sweep? Because he hit that, he ran the pipe nice on that single and ended up on top. And he just kind of looked. I don't know if he was tired or if he just if, is Damian Mai setting things up. Like my a, my jiu jitsu eyes don't see. Sort of like a clothesline single, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He gets to, uh, he allows himself hook. to get elevated right so it, easily yeah. without underhooks here. Yeah. And then you see here. It, to me, it just looks like he doesn't try to get up. It's just, to be just, honest, like he's no, tired or something. He looks like Homer Simpson on the back right there trying to, I don't know what the hell he's doing. And Damian Myers, uh, butterfly guard passing is probably equal to his back control and finishes. Yeah, I just look at the pressure he's keeping. I mean, Ben's doing a good job of trying to create frames there, but then he's doing that wrestler stand-up here yeah, like where he's getting the yeah. back. Like, uh, yeah, I, it didn't see, seem like Damian was hitting him hard enough for him to fully concede the position like right, that, right? right. Seems like he was looking for a looking for a way out there. I think. I mean, I wonder if it got in Ben's head so much that he's such a good scrambler. He's got such faith as a wrestler in a guy being on his back that he thought that he thought maybe he'd be safe being there. But I feel like you got a guy like Damian Maya, yourself, Lachlan Giles, anybody like that. You can't you can't be giving up your back to those guys. You don't want you. Don't, I don't want you on my back. <laughs> but, no. The, uh, what's so interesting about this is he finishes him, puts him to sleep with one hand. Right. I didn't even check. Is he not locked? You'll see it, right? He uh, Askin does fight the grips. It's funny. He goes to tap, but he taps once. He, he taps sleeps. as he's going to sleep. Yeah. You know what? Nothing you can. You, one thing you can't take away from Ben Askin, though, he's a goofy guy. Puts a lot of guys off, but he's a tough son of a bitch. Anybody who goes out in a fight, I'll give it to him. Yeah. You can see the strange grips. He's probably yeah, that's a, the weird left, grip. He's got an elbow there. Left hand to right bicep, but uh, Askin's controlling the secondary hand. Now, is, is, is Askren attacking the right way to defend this? Yeah, Askren on one grip, yeah. would theoretically be trying to get his uh, back of his head to the floor and turn to face Damian Maia here. But he'd want to be getting back flat and turn in, correct? Yeah, yeah. And he's out. Yeah, one tap and he's done. But you can see it's sort of not your traditional rear naked choke grip finish. It's not a uh, gable grip and it's not a hand behind the back of the head. It yeah. just shows how tired Damian's squeeze is. Yeah, it's fucking anaconda's down there. Who did he choke uh, and the guy's nose blew up? 
You know what I mean? He choked the guy uh, and the nose, yeah, exploded. Nose exploded out. That's how tight he squeezed. Who is that? I know what you're talking like about. Because he was on the nose or because he was. It, it was, was a face choke, like, but the pressure just. fresh. Yeah. <laughs> just blew up. If you, so if you're, if you're Dana White, while we're looking at this one up, if you're Dana White, you got a guy like Damian Maya who has, again, proved himself to you know, be at that top level, but not quite able to kind of bridge the gap. Rick Story, that's the oh, one, yeah. Rick Story's a touch on bitch. Who do, who do you put a guy like Damien, what do you do with a guy like Damian Maya next? He's, you know, this is for you too, Simon. I mean, yeah. he's what, he's 42, just beat a guy they're pumping a whole bunch of blood into. You know, yeah, they put him in a boring Singapore card. And, you know, but I mean, Damian Maya's been showing up. I mean, do you do you put him in line with the, do you do you, do you have him fight the guys, the Colby Covingtons, the Kamaru Usmans? Do you have him fight? Well, he f- that he's fought both of them. There he's like only two losses in his yeah. last, well, he's had, I think lost three in his last 10. So you can't really two, pump him back in. It's like Colby and And he's had Usman title shots in two divisions, right? Yeah, exactly, because yeah. he fought Anderson at 85. And just Tyron just Woodley. Just short of that top level, but yeah. but he's like the ultimate gatekeeper. Yeah, like, you know, like there's a lot of people not, that don't get past. And him. he's not like your entry gatekeeper though. He's that, no. he's, that he's that gatekeeper to For like the, the final three. boss. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. Yeah. He's that guy you got to fight before you fight Goro. I don't know what you would do with him. I don't know what uh, Damian Maya would want to do at this point in his career. Hey, maybe go out on a because he on fights a also a lot. He the you know his twenty wins or whatever seems to sort of creep up because he fights low down on cards. He's on undercards half the time. Yeah, like, they don't really pump him up. So right uh, now the UFC's got him ranked number. 10 but he will that's before that is that, he, this that previous to this so, oh, you know no, Stephen Thompson happens. is an interesting matchup for Damian Maya what's that you can talk Vicente, it's okay Vicente, he's fighting with Vicente, on the Vicente Lupe on the weekend all right well that'll be that Luque. guy's got some crazy fights hey he's a tough zone bitch man <laughs> nice. well, he did to Mike Perry's nose yeah <laughs> rearranged Mike Perry's face Mike Perry speaking of I saw on Twitter the other day he's trying to get a fight with Robbie Lawler you know what? That makes my violence dick hard, man. That, that, my, that Mike, makes the front of my pants tight. Mike Perry did Kasai grappling. He took a gi match and he fought on the undercard. We grappled on the undercard of Kasai yeah. in Florida. How'd he go? Uh, I believe he won. Yeah. Look at look oh, at look geez. at this is a this is a man's man right here. <laughs> this is, look at the look at the look at that son of a bitch. He's that is so a tough man. dude. I, did, I just feel like he'd be a fun guy to party. He with. still won that fight, didn't he? No, no Luke. No. Luke. Luke yeah. beat him oh, on yeah. that one. But it was uh, it was like a close one, right? Yeah. So, speaking of UFC huh. fights, though, the big one, though, they've been fucking gathering at us to get to over here. Masvidal, uh, Nate Diaz. Yes, yeah. What are your thoughts on that BMF, baddest motherfucker around title? I don't know. I think it's kind of a lame belt. Right. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a real kind of like, I think people either love it or hate it because it's like if you fight for a belt, it should be the belt. Right. Yeah. This is kind of like that. You've been in the game a long time. You're, you know, people like you, Belt. Like, this is, this, this, they, I love Georgie, but I feel like this is a bit of a, of a participation award. Are they just doing that to piss off Conor McGregor? Guaranteed. I thought the whole thing was a shakeup to get McGregor back. When, yeah. Because uh, like, Diaz this weekend, if people weren't paying attention, he said Usada had flagged him for some shit, and uh, magically that Usada flag went away. It's amazing what happens when you throw money at things, I guess. But uh, I thought, yeah. I thought it was all a big setup to get McGregor to step in and come in on Madison Square Garden. You guys yeah. are wrong on that because this fight is happening. But I, I don't. What, what are your thoughts, like Simon? What do you think on like? I, look, I think the titles. titles I because I'm actually really it's interested a great in the fight. fight. Yeah. It's a great so fight. don't. I don't want to sh- like. I'm yeah, not shitting on the fight. I'm shitting on the title. Like the title to me is yeah. pointless. But saying that, it's got people talking, it's and it's bring, probably brought more back to the sport. It's probably even if it's no, that all press is good press kind of thing. Yeah, so people yeah, are yeah. talking about it more, and the fight's got a lot of you know publicity that it may. It deserved the big publicity, but it maybe wasn't going to get it. As right, much without as them, without them adding this, yeah. this extra so thing. So look, it. I suppose from that point of view, it serves them a purpose. But it's a, it's a fucking nothing belt. Like I don't, and I don't think either of these guys probably. Give no, but I mean, these boys are cashing checks on this one. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, so, yeah. <laughs> sure Who's getting paid? Surely Diaz getting paid more for this one, right? Right, yeah, because he's got—he's probably coming off those old Connor contracts too. But George, I, George, I mean, I know George is from back in Florida. He's not going to show up for no money. <laughs> I mean, George is going to get paid. You know, <laughs> George, and who, who do you take in it? I'm, I'm going Masvidal. You can't, you can't, you can't bet. He's that man's flying right now. Yeah, you can't bet against him. So much momentum. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to get. It's hard to go against that momentum like that. Because how long since Diaz has Diaz not been and super active? Just fought Pettis. Just fought Pettis, right? He looked good, oh, yeah. but Pettis ain't, you know, Pettis ain't what it used to be. You know, um, probably wrap this thing up here, Craig. What's coming up next for you, brother? Like, lay it out. What's what's next thing? What is what is the next twelve months for Craig Jones look like? I don't even know. A long time. I, I really don't know. Tomorrow, bro. <laughs> I was just focused on ADCC. Now I'm just yeah. like taking a little time. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. ADCC is not again till 2021. I think it's going to be in Las Vegas next time. So obviously that's the long-term focus. But yeah, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know. Take interesting matches. Come up to Japan and get a get an MMA fight. Take maybe? a fight. Take hey. a beat down. <laughs> <laughs> if the price is right, I'll do anything. Fucking a, right? <laughs> you know, um, and one other thing, you got any, any shout outs or anything you want to make? Guys, for MA1 gear, you can get your Craig Jones, your fuck Craig Jones. You can get your leopard print shit here at Absolute Craig. You got anything else you want to shout out? All I know you got the, all, all your DVDs. All the uh, MA1 combat website, you can get uh, yeah. Craig yeah, for the Yeah, for the US, is um, just MA1 combat, right? Yeah. And what you said it was uh, fifteen dollars shipping. Well, I think away. it's ten ten bucks flat rate shipping, and over a hundred bucks it's free. And there's buy one get one free on all rash guards, MMA shorts, all that stuff. And this stuff is heat. It's heat. Craig looks real nice in it. You might look a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> and camps coming. Uh, so you just came off a of camp. Uh, just, yeah, just came Thailand. off a camp at Absolute uh, MMA in Thailand. And He's um, putting out some dates for 2021. Yeah, I think we might have yeah, January, Feb or something next yeah. year, and then yeah, I think it'll be two or three for 2021. Nice. And if people want to get on you on social media or anything like that, they can find you just on everything, yeah? Craig Jones BJJ, yeah. Mainly Instagram. I'm pretty, la- the gram, baby. I'm pretty lazy on, the- out there. <laughs> on social media. <laughs> <laughs> right on, man. Right on. Well, guys, hey, check out Absolute MMA in Thailand here in Melbourne in the CBD, Collingwood, and St. Kilda, St. Kilda with all the jiu-jitsu freaks. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, Simon, you got anything, brother? No, I'm all happy. Thanks a lot for coming on, Craig. Thanks for having me. Always a yeah. pleasure. We'll be back soon with more. Uh, in a fortnight, I believe so. In a fortnight. Who's, that means two yeah. weeks for who's people next? who don't speak uh, Who's next guest? I don't know. We'll, we'll see who we can Remains drag. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll make an announcement before. Craig, you it might could be, be back, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> could be, if it's shit to get weird, we could put Roger on. Yeah. yeah. Or, uh, or Lucky. But we'll try and get people from yeah. outside the team as well. So Anyway, thanks for listening, guys. I'm Jay Kuhn for Simon Carson, Craig Jones, legend. Peace out. Thank you.